Imagine a morning in late November, a coming of winter morning more than 20 years ago. Consider the kitchen of a spreading old house in a country town. A great black stove is its main feature, but there is also a big round table and a fireplace with two rocking chairs placed in front of it. Just today, the fireplace commenced its seasonal roar. A woman with shorn white hair is standing at the kitchen window. She's wearing tennis shoes and a shapeless gray sweater over a summery calico dress. She is small and sprightly, like a bantam hen. But, due to a long, youthful illness, her shoulders are pitifully hunched. Her face is remarkable, not unlike Lincoln's. Craggy like that and tinted by sun and wind, but it is delicate too, fine-boned, and her eyes are sherry-colored and timid. Oh my! She exclaims, her breath smoking the window pane. It's fruitcake weather. <laughs> the person to whom she is speaking is myself. I am seven. She is sixty-something. We are cousins, very distant ones. And we have lived together, well, as long as I can remember. Other people inhabit the house. Relatives. And though they have power over us and frequently make us cry, we are not, on the whole, too much aware. We are each other's best friend. She calls me Buddy, in memory of a boy who was formerly her best friend. The other Buddy died in the 1880s when she was still a child. She is still a child. I knew it before I got out of bed, she says, turning away from the window with a purposeful excitement in her eyes. The courthouse bell sounded so cold and clear, and, and there were no birds singing. They've gone to warmer country, yes indeed. Oh, Buddy. Stop stuffing biscuit and fetch our buggy. Help me find my hat. We've 30 cakes to bake. It is always the same. A morning arrives in November, and my friend, as though officially inaugurating the Christmas time of year that exhilarates her imagination and fuels the blaze of her heart, announces, It's fruitcake weather. Fetch the buggy. Help me find my hat. The hat is found. A straw cartwheel corsaged with velvet roses out of doors has faded. It once belonged to a more fashionable relative. Together, we guide our buggy, a dilapidated baby carriage, out into the garden and into a grove of pecan trees. The buggy is mine. That is, it was bought for me when I was born. It is made of wicker, rather unraveled, and the wheels wobble like a drunkard's legs. But it is a faithful object. Spring times, we take it to the woods and fill it with flowers, herbs, wild for fern for our porch pots. In the summer, we pile it with picnic paraphernalia and sugarcane fishing poles and roll it down to the edge of a creek. It has its winter uses, too, as a truck for hauling firewood from the yard to the kitchen, as a warm bed for Queenie, our tough little orange and white rat terrier, who has survived distemper and two rattlesnake bites. Queenie is trotting beside it now. Three hours later, we are back in the kitchen pulling a heaping buggy load of windfall pecans. Our backs hurt from gathering them, how hard they were to find, the main crop having been shaken off the trees and sold by the orchard's owners, who are not us, among the concealing leaves, the frosted, deceiving grass. Crackle. A cheery crunch, scraps of miniature thunder sound as the shells collapse, and golden mound of sweet, oily, ivory meat mounts in the milk glass bowl. Queenie begs to taste, and now and again, my friend sneaks her a bite, though insisting we deprive ourselves. We mustn't, buddy. If we start, we won't stop. And there's scarcely enough as there is for thirty cakes. The kitchen is growing dark. Dusk turns the windows into a mirror. Our reflections mingle with the rising moon as we work by the fireside in the firelight. At last, when the moon is quite high, we toss the final hull into the fire and, with joined sighs, watch it catch flame. The buggy is empty. The bowl is full. We eat our supper, cold biscuits, bacon, blackberry jam, and discuss tomorrow. Tomorrow, the kind of work I like best begins buying. <laughs> Cherries and citron, ginger and vanilla and canned Hawaiian pineapple, rinds and raisins and walnuts and whiskey, and oh, so much flour, butter, so many eggs, spices, flavorings. Why, we'll need a pony to pull the buggy home. But before these purchases can be made, 
There is the question of money. Neither of us has any. Except for the skinflint sums persons in the house occasionally provide. A dime is considered very big money. Or what we earn ourselves from various activities, holding rummage sales, selling buckets of hand-picked blackberries, jars of homemade jam and apple jelly and peach preserves, rounding up flowers for funerals and weddings. Once, we won 79th prize, five dollars, mm -hmm. in a national football contest. Not that we know a full thing about football. It's just that we enter any contest we hear about. At the moment, our hopes are centered on the $50,000 grand prize being offered to name a new brand of coffee. We suggested AM. And after some hesitation from my friend thought it perhaps sacrilegious, the slogan, A.M. Amen. <laughs> to tell the truth, our only really profitable enterprise was the fun and freak museum we conducted in the backyard woodshed two summers ago. The fun was a stereopticon with slide views of Washington and New York, lent us by a relative who had been to those places. She was furious when she discovered that we had borrowed it. The freak was a three-legged biddy chicken, hatched by one of our own hens. Everyone hereabouts wanted to see that biddy. We charged grown-ups a nickel, kids two cents, and took in a good twenty dollars before the museum shut down due to the decease of the main attraction. <laughs>